Pikachu and friends in Storytime Adventures. Choo Choo and her friends liked to visit and help the little animals who lived in the forest. Here, monkey. These bananas are for you. Rabbits, these carrots are for you. Squirrels, would you like some nuts? There were some turtles who lived in the forest, too. One of them was their king. He helped all the other turtles and the fish who lived in the lake. Oh, look! It's the Turtle King! Let's give him some lettuce! Like the other turtles, the Turtle King walked very slowly. But Choo Choo and her friends knew that he was very special. Look at the Turtle King, Cha Cha! He's walking very slowly. But there are many special things about him and the other turtles. Cha-Cha, did you know that turtles can live both on land and in the water? And that the shell on their backs are very hard? Turtles' homes. They carry them wherever they go, and they hide in them whenever they're feeling shy. Really? One day, a poacher came to the forest. He wanted to catch some animals. Hmm. I wonder which little animal I should catch today. I want to make a delicious dish to eat. The poacher spotted the turtle king. Aha! A turtle! I must catch it! 
and make myself some delicious turtle soup. And so, the poacher tiptoed behind the Turtle King and caught him. The Turtle King tried to escape, but the poacher was too strong. No, no, no. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> the monkeys saw the poacher with the Turtle King. They rushed to call Choo Choo and her friends. What is it, little monkeys? Is something wrong? Do you need our help? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll come with you. And so, Choo Choo and the other children went with the monkeys. In the meantime, the poacher had made a fire and set a pot of water to boil. Carrots, tomatoes, peas, salt, pepper, and a turtle. Once I put all these things in the water, I'll have a delicious turtle soup. Mmm. The monkeys took Choo Choo and the others to the spot where the poacher and the turtle king were. Oh no! There's a poacher in the forest. He's caught the Turtle King. He's going to put him in his soup. Hmm. I have an idea. I know how we can save the Turtle King. Monkeys, fish, you must help us. Now, listen carefully, everyone. Choo Choo told everyone her plan. Choo Choo and the others then went up to the poacher. Hello, mister. Are you cooking something? Yes, I'm making some turtle soup. Mmm, that, that sounds, sounds delicious. delicious. Will you share some with us? We are very hungry. You've washed the vegetables nicely. You should wash the turtle too. He looks very dirty and muddy. Huh? Is that so? him playing in the mud this morning. He had big fat worms crawling over his back. And we also saw him crawling where a monkey had done a poo-poo. Really? Ew! <laughs> Mister, the water in the lake is very clean. You can wash the turtle there. He'll also taste nicer and fresher if you do that. Hmm. The poacher listened to Choo Choo and her friends. He took the Turtle King to the lake. And he dipped him in the water. Just then, Chiku signaled to the monkeys. And Chica signaled to the fishes in the lake. 
to the poacher surprise. All the monkeys gathered on the trees around the lake, and they all began scolding him. Huh? Then they started throwing the fruit from the trees at the poacher as well. Ow! 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 The poacher used one hand to save himself from the fruit. But his other hand was still in the water, holding on to the Turtle King. And so, the fish in the lake began biting it. They wanted the poacher to loosen his grip on the Turtle King. The poacher had no choice but to pull his hand out of the water, he let the Turtle King go. Yeah! And the moment he did that, the Turtle King quickly swam away. Yay! Yay! Choo Choo then quickly called the Forest Ranger. Mr. Forest Ranger, there's a poacher in the forest. Don't worry, Choo Choo. We'll take care of him. Please come with us, mister. Er, you children tricked me. You made me put the turtle in the water so it could escape while the monkeys threw fruits on me and the fish bit me. We are sorry about that, mister. But we didn't want you to hurt our friend. Hmm. The forest ranger made sure the poacher left the forest and never returned again. Choo Choo, her friends, and all the other forest animals then had a party for the Turtle King, who felt happy and grateful to have Choo Choo and the other children as his friends. Hip hip! Hooray! Choo Choo was in the house with Cha Cha and Baby Taku. She was helping her mother take care of them. Suddenly, Cha-Cha and Baby Taku heard the sound of the ice cream cart. Huh? Ice cream! Yes! It's Mr. Icy, the ice cream man! Come on! Let's go get some ice cream! Cha-Cha and Baby Taku started to run out of the house. But Choo Choo stopped them. I'm sorry, Cha-Cha and Baby Taku, but you're not allowed to leave the house by yourselves. It's not safe for little ones like us. We could get into trouble. Just like Dolly the donkey did when she ran away from the farm and met the wolf. Dolly donkey? A wolf? Yes. Let me tell you the story. <coughs> Dolly was a little donkey. She worked for a farmer on a small farm near the woods. Dolly always grumbled because the farmer gave her dry hay to eat and never let her leave the farm. Farmer, you always give me dry hay to eat. Why don't you let me go to the woods? I want to eat the sweet green grass that grows there. I'm sorry, Dolly. But the woods aren't safe for you. There are lots of wild animals in the woods. They may try to eat you. You'll be safe here with me and Bruno on the farm. Aww. 
There was a wolf who lived in the woods. He had seen Dolly. Mmm, that donkey looks delicious. But she's always on the farm with the farmer and the dog. I must find some way to get her to come to the woods so I can eat her. One day, the wolf heard Dolly grumbling. Aww, the farmer's giving me dry hay again. I wish he would give me something nice and juicy. Mm, so the donkey wants something nice to eat. I must tell her about the grass in the woods so that she'll run away from the farm and come to the woods. The wolf found a sheepskin. <laughs> he wore it and pretended that he was a sheep. Bah, bah. Hello, donkey. I'm a sheep. I'm from the woods. What's that dry thing you're eating? Is it hay? Yes, sheep. It's hay, and it's very dry. You poor thing. You must come to the woods. The woods are full of sweet and juicy grass. Huh? Sweet and juicy grass? Yes! The wolf's plan worked, and Dolly began to dream of the grass in the woods. If I could only go to the woods, I'd be able to eat the grass the sheep told me about. Oh, but I'm stuck here on the farm. The next day, Dolly saw the farm gate was open. Huh? And when the farmer and the dog weren't looking, she ran away from the farm. Hooray! I can go to the woods now and eat all the green grass I want. <laughs> Dolly ran quickly to the woods. There she found a hill full of green grass. Ooh, this must be the grass the sheep told me about. I'm gonna eat as much as I can. Mm. Mm. The wolf spotted Dolly. Aha! So the donkeys come to the woods. I can eat her up now. The wolf walked towards Dolly. But on the way, the sheepskin he was wearing slipped. And Dolly, who had very sharp eyes, immediately understood that it wasn't a sheep, but a wolf. No sheep, it's a wolf. He pretended to be a sheep and told me about the grass so I would come here. He wants to eat me up. I must think of a way to escape, save myself, and get back to the farm. As the wolf came closer, Dolly pretended to cry. <laughs> The wolf was very surprised to hear Dolly crying. Why are you crying, donkey? Aren't you enjoying yourself in the woods? I was enjoying myself. But a big sharp thorn got stuck on the hoof of my right hind leg. I wish someone would take it out. Don't worry, donkey. Your hoof won't hurt for very long. Because 
I'm going to eat you up now. And guess what? I'm not a sheep. I'm a wolf. Oh, you can eat me up. I really don't mind. But you should really take the thorn out first. If you eat me while the thorn is still in my hoof, it will scratch your throat and poke your tummy. Huh? The wolf was convinced. He didn't want the thorn to scratch him or poke him. So, he bent down to take the thorn out. Hmm. Now let me see. Where's that thorn? Dolly knew that this was her chance to escape. So, she gave the wolf a hard kick. <laughs> Goodbye! Ouch! Dolly's kick sent the wolf rolling all the way down the hill. Far, far away from Dolly. Ow! Ow! Dolly then ran back to the farm where the farmer was waiting for her. Dolly, where have you been? I've been so worried. I went to the woods, farmer. But I'm not going there on my own ever again. I'm going to stay here with you on your farm. And I'll never grumble about anything again. Hee-haw! Hee-haw! So, Dolly stayed on the farm and made sure she always listened to the farmer. Cha-Cha and Baby Taku liked Choo Choo's story. We like your story, Choo Choo. Yes! And we won't be like Dolly Donkey. We won't leave the house by ourselves. Uh-huh. Very good, Cha-Cha and Baby Taku. Cha-Cha and Baby Taku waited for their mother. And they only went out with her and Choo Choo. Their mother was so happy with them for being good children that she bought them each two scoops of their favorite ice cream. Mmm! -hmm. Yummy! Cha-Cha had a lot of toys that he no longer played with. He wanted to give them to the younger children. But there were many children. And Cha-Cha didn't know who to give the toys to. Huh? Choo-Choo, there are so many children here. Who should I give my toys to? You've taken good care of your toys, Cha-Cha. And so, you must give them to someone who will take care of them, too. Huh? I have an idea. Why don't you leave the toys here and watch the children? It will help you make the right choice. Just like Grandpa Mouse did when he wanted to see which one of his daughters would be the best one to look after his family. Huh? Grandpa Mouse? His daughters? Yes! Let me tell you a story. And so, Choo Choo began to tell Cha Cha a story. Grandpa Mouse was an old mouse. He lived in a big house with his four daughters and many baby mice. Grandpa Mouse worked very hard. He took care of the whole family with the money that he earned. But 
Grandpa Mouse was growing old. He wanted to rest and give someone else the responsibility of looking after his family. I'm growing old now. I must find someone else to take over my responsibilities. Hmm. My four daughters are kind and nice, but I must see which one of them is wise and sensible and the best one to look after the family. The next morning, Grandpa Mouse went out of the house first thing. When he returned, he had four bags with them. They all had raw peanuts in them. Later that day, Grandpa Mouse called his four daughters. And gave them a bag each. My dears, all these bags have peanuts in them. You all must each take a bag and then give me back the peanuts after six months. Okay, Dad. So, each of the four daughters took a bag of peanuts. They were puzzled and wondered what they should do with the peanuts for six months. Time flew by and soon six months had passed. Grandpa Mouse called his daughters once again. My dears, it's been six months since I gave you each a bag of peanuts. Now I would like for you to give me my peanuts back. Yes, Dad! Grandpa Mouse's first daughter had kept her bag of peanuts in a tree hole. She went to the tree and took the bag out. But when she opened the bag, she found that all the peanuts had turned rotten. Huh? Oh no! Grandpa Mouse's second daughter had sold her peanuts for two gold coins. And she had kept the two gold coins very safely. As soon as Grandpa Mouse asked for the peanuts, she took the coins to the market to buy a bag full of peanuts. But to her shock, the price of the peanuts had doubled. A bag of peanuts costs four gold coins now. Huh? <laughs> Grandpa Mouse's third daughter had eaten some of the peanuts. And then she had eaten more and more. When she opened the bag, she realized that she had finished all the peanuts and that the bag was empty. Huh? Oh no! I finished all the peanuts! Grandpa Mouse's fourth daughter took Grandpa Mouse to a field near their house. It was full of peanut plants. And Grandpa Mouse saw that there were peanuts growing all over the field. Dad, I planted the peanuts you gave me here. They have grown into plants. All the peanuts in this field belong to you. Well done, my dear. Grandpa Mouse was delighted. He realized that his fourth daughter was wise and clever. And so he decided to give her the responsibility of looking after his money and family. You used the peanuts I gave you very wisely. You planted them and made them grow. 
I gave you just one bag of peanuts, but you've turned them into a hundred bags. You are wise and responsible. You'll do a good job of looking after my hard-earned money and our family. Thank you, Dad. Grandpa Mouse's fourth daughter looked after his money and the whole family very nicely. Cha Cha liked Choo Choo's story so much that he decided to be like Grandpa Mouse. Okay, Choo Choo, I'm going to be like Grandpa Mouse and choose carefully. I'm going to leave my toys here and see who takes the best care of them. Cha Cha set his old toys down. All the children came and picked them up. Most of them started mistreating the toys. But Baby John played with the toys carefully. He also shared the toys with others. Cha Cha saw that Baby John loved the toys just like he did. Choo Choo, look! The other babies are wrecking my toys. But Baby John is caring for them so nicely. He also likes to share the toys just like I did. So I'm going to give my toy to Baby John. And so, Cha Cha gave all his toys to Baby John. You can have my toys, Baby John. I know you'll take good care of them. Huh? Thank you. Cha Cha felt very happy whenever he saw Baby John playing with his toys. For Baby John took very good care of Cha Cha's toys. And Cha Cha knew that he had made the right decision. Chuchu and her friends took baby Taku to the forest. They wanted to show them some of the animals who lived there. But Cusley kept on teasing and playing pranks on Chacha and baby Taku. and baby Taku. Cusley didn't listen. He kept playing pranks on Cha-Cha and baby Taku. Soon, the children reached the forest lake. They saw a troop of monkeys there. The monkeys were playing with some turtles. They were swinging with them from tree to tree. So that the turtles would have fun. <laughs> The kids also noticed a special slide that the monkeys had made for the turtles from a slanting tree trunk. The turtles loved sliding down the slide 
and landing on the soft pile of leaves and twigs the monkeys had made. <laughs> huh? <laughs> there were also some turtles in the lake, giving the baby monkeys rides on their backs. And the baby monkeys were giving the turtles and fish fresh lettuce and juicy fruits to eat. Mmm! Mmm! Cusly, Baby Taku, and Cha-Cha were excited. They were happy to see that the monkeys, the fish, and the turtles were such good friends. But they were also very curious to know how the monkeys became friends with the fishes and turtles. Choo-choo! The monkeys live high up on the trees. And the turtles and the fish live in the lake. How did the monkeys become such good friends with the fish and the turtles then? Please tell us. Yes, Choo Choo. Please tell us. Choo Choo began to tell Cusly, Cha Cha, and Baby Taku a story. Once upon a time, a troop of very naughty monkeys lived in the forest. They stayed high up in the forest trees. The monkeys liked to tease and play pranks on the turtles and fish who lived in the forest lake. The naughty monkeys used to shake the branches of the trees and drop leaves and fruits on the turtles and fish. Ouch! <laughs> the turtles and the fish did not appreciate the monkeys' behavior. They wished the monkeys would stop troubling them and leave them alone. Ouch! Please stop troubling us, please! But the monkeys wouldn't stop. They continued to drop fruits and leaves on them every day. Ow! Then, one day, something terrible happened. A group of baby monkeys were swinging on an old branch. They were shaking the branch to drop leaves and fruits on the turtles and fish in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, the branch the baby monkeys were sitting on snapped. Huh? It broke away from the tree and fell into the lake. The baby monkeys fell into the water. All the mommy and daddy monkeys were very worried when they saw what had happened. Oh no! Someone save our babies! The baby monkeys didn't know how to swim. They were very afraid and began to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy! Mommy! Huh? The turtles and fish didn't know what to do. They felt sorry for the baby monkeys. But... Then the Turtle King, who was the king of the lake, came out of the water and spoke to the turtles and fish. Now they are in trouble. The baby monkeys do not know how to swim. And so we must be kind and save them. So the turtles and the fish decided to help the baby monkeys. Come on, little monkeys. Climb onto our shells. We'll take you to the shore. The turtles 
carried the baby monkeys on their backs. And the fish cleared the way for the turtles to swim to the lake shore more quickly. The mommy and daddy monkeys felt very grateful for the fish and turtles' help. Thank you for helping us. You saved our children from drowning. We are sorry we teased you, played pranks on you. We promise we won't do it again. We'd like to be your friends. Huh? Huh? The turtles and the fish once again didn't know what to do. But then, the Turtle King came out and spoke again. Even though you are creatures who swing on trees, and we are ones who swim in the water, we are all creatures of the forest. And so, we must be kind to each other, as friends do. Hooray! From that day onwards, the monkeys never made fun of or played pranks on the turtles and the fish. Instead, the monkeys were very kind to them. They even brought them fresh fruits and vegetables every day. This is for you, my friend. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. The monkeys and the fish and the turtles took care of each other, played with each other, and lived together very happily. Just as Choo Choo finished her story, a little monkey jumped down and grabbed Cusley's cap. He put it on his head and tried to look like Cha-Cha, Baby Taku, and Cusley. Huh? That's my favorite cap! I want it back! Somebody help me! Cha-Cha and Baby Taku decided to be kind and helpful, like the turtles and fish from Choo Choo's story. Even though Cusley had been teasing and playing pranks on them. And so, they helped Cusley get his cap back. Monkey, please give Cusley his cap back. No? Okay, you can have our caps too. <laughs> And that made Cusley want to be kind and helpful too. Gee, thanks Cha-Cha and Baby Taku. I'm sorry I was mean, but from now on, I'm going to be kind, just like you two. And the turtles and the fish. Hooray! One day, Cha-Cha saw a mouse in the garden and grew very frightened. Yikes! A mouse! Huh? Cha-Cha, are you scared of the mouse? Yes, Choo-Choo. I wish I was older and stronger. I wouldn't be afraid of anything then. That mouse is just a tiny little creature, Cha-Cha. You shouldn't be afraid of him. Look! He looks very afraid too. He's probably scared of you and some bigger animals. Just like Squeaky Mouse was. Squeaky Mouse? Yes, let me tell you his story. 
And so Choo Choo began to tell Cha Cha a story. Long ago, there lived a mouse named Squeaky Mouse. Squeaky didn't like being a mouse, and so he always grumbled. Oh, I wish I wasn't a mouse. Mice are scared of everything, especially... was very afraid of cats. And every time he saw one, he wished he was someone stronger. One evening, Squeaky met a wizard. Hello, Squeaky. You look so tired and hungry. Wait, I'll make you some cheese. Abracadabra. Ah. Squeaky realized that the wizard could use his magic to do many things. And so he asked for his help. Mr. Wizard? Please help me. Please help me turn into a cat. A cat? Yes. Cats are very powerful. If I'm a cat, I'll never be frightened. The wizard was very wise. Are you sure you want to be a cat? Squeaky! The wizard tried to warn Squeaky, but Squeaky had made up his mind. Yes, Mr. Wizard. Okay, then. Abracadabra! So the wizard turned Squeaky into a cat. So Squeaky liked being a cat for some time because he didn't feel afraid of cats anymore. Slurp, slurp. But then something else frightened Squeaky. Yikes! A dog! So Squeaky went back to the wizard. Mr. Wizard, please turn me into a dog. I want to be a dog. Dogs are stronger than cats. Okay, Squeaky. Okay, Abracadabra. So the wizard turned Squeaky into a dog. Squeaky liked being a dog for some time. But then he got scared by a wolf. What a yummy looking dog you are. I must have you for my dinner. <sighs> Yikes! A wolf! So Squeaky found that dogs also get very afraid. Please turn me into a wolf, Mr. Wizard. Please? Pretty please? Okay! Abracadabra! So the wizard changed Squeaky into a wolf. Yikes! A 
Spikes! A bear! Help! Squeaky watches the bear getting scared of the tiger and runs away. Squeaky now sees the big tiger getting frightened just by hearing the lion's roar. Squeaky sees the lion, the master of the jungle. He decides to change himself into a lion. Ha ha! I'm a lion! I'm the king of the jungle! There's no one who can scare me! Yikes! A mouse! Mommy! So Squeaky went back to the wizard. Mr. Wizard, please turn me into a mouse! I want to be a mouse! But that's who you were in the first place, Squeaky! You didn't like being one, remember? Huh? Oh, yes! Ha <laughs> ha! I was a mouse! And then I wanted to be someone bigger because I thought bigger creatures didn't feel afraid. But now I realize that everyone is afraid of something or the other. That's exactly what I wanted you to learn, Squeaky. That's why I kept changing you into different creatures. Please remember, it's okay to feel afraid, but the important thing is to be brave and face your fears. That's the only thing that will stop you from feeling frightened. You're right, Mr. Wizard. Please turn me into a mouse again. Abracadabra! So the wizard turned Squeaky into a mouse again. Squeaky was happy to be a mouse now. He realized that he was very powerful, even though he was little. And each time Squeaky Mouse saw a cat again, this is what he said. Hi, I'm Squeaky the mouse. And even lions are afraid of mice like me. <laughs> Choo Choo's story helped Cha Cha feel a lot braver. Don't be afraid, Cha Cha. Be like Squeaky Mouse and face your fears. Hi, Squeaky Mouse. I'm going to be just like you. And every time I feel scared, I'm going to think of you. 